David, you are a long-term supporter of the multi-world interpretation of the Schrodinger yes. equation that governs the wave function of the quantum of quantum mechanical systems. Uh, are these splitting off worlds infinite in number? We'll start simple. Oh, it, it's not known, and it doesn't make much difference to the theory whether they are or not. But I think the infinities you were talking about, the cosmological ones, they're different from the quantum mechanical yes. uh, universe. The universes uh, that, are, that are invoked in cosmology are universes with different laws of physics and so on. And there, there is a genuine problem. If, if there's an infinite number of them, there's a genuine problem that that means that no predictions can be made about them because uh, if they're all equally likely, that that doesn't mean anything because that then then their pro each of their probabilities is zero strictly zero so uh that that's completely different from the uh, uh quantum mechanical universes proposed by hugh everett and by schrodinger by the way uh which i think there is uh incontrovertible evidence for and which precisely do not have this measure problem so if the cosmological uh, infinity is to be tamed some way of solving the measure problem for them has to be uh, appended to the existing theories. Of course, if there's a finite number of them, like 10 to the 500, then there's still an issue. There's still an issue of whether the number should be regarded as a probability. I think not. Okay, there are many questions that one have. I do understand the multi-world interpretation is, is theoretically the only interpretation that doesn't interpret the, the the Schrodinger equation. It just takes it at face value and doesn't have to go through any type of uh, a decoherence or anything else. We'll, we'll we'll get to that. But I, I still want to press you on this: is you know, is the number infinite, or is it just you know so many gazillions that it, it, it that you don't know? Can you give, give an answer to that? Well, I think it's not known. The, 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 uh, it could be. It could be infinite. Number, it could be it literally. It could, it could easily be infinite. Uh, would, the number of distinct of, of distinguishable universes is more likely to be discrete, but it could still be a discrete infinity, like the the infinity of the integers, uh, rather than a continuous infinity. But we we don't know in either in either. Uh, and would that be an infinity in both uh, uh, temporal directions, backward and forward? I, I, I'm asking maybe uh, naive questions, but these come to mind when I hear about the multi world. No, it's not naive. Now you're you're raising you're raising the question to involve quantum gravity as well, because different times are special cases of different universes. But what that means in a specific theory, we just don't know. That would require a theory which unified general relativity and quantum mechanics, and we don't have a satisfactory one of those. So, sure. you know, I, sorry, I don't know. I would tell you if I did. <laughs> no, I know. I know you do. You're not bashful with your <laughs> ideas. That, that we know for sure. Uh, George, um, when I first heard the multi-world many years ago, I mean, you know, the first reaction is, you know, is that a joke? Who could, you can't believe that. But as I began to understand it, the, the measurement problem uh, is real in quantum mechanics and the multi-world interpretation claims to be and may seem to be the only literal approach to the probabilities in the Schrodinger equation. But, you know, is this cure worse than the disease? Well, you see, I start off with a very different position from David on this. He said there's indisputable evidence for the um, Everett multiverse. I, I, don't, I don't even begin to believe that. So we start off in such a different place. Um, and, and I, I really have to raise the problem here. The, 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 the Schrodinger equation is a linear equation, okay? And the idea appears to be, and I've been having a debate about this, that there is one function, the wave function of the universe, which obeys this equation, and that determines everything. Uh, is that right? Yeah. So if that is true, then how do mice and atoms and sheep and cows and birds exist. I simply cannot believe that one function linearly evolving results in all of that outcome. So, so we start off in a completely different um, uh, position. Um, and our, 
to, just to explain that a little bit, I believe there are local wave functions everywhere in the universe, but no global wave function. And that makes it, it puts the whole thing in a completely different perspective. So I just don't have this problem of all these branching functions and all the rest of it, because on my view, there are local wave functions, wave function collapse takes place locally, depending on local conditions. And we, I never even get near the problems that David is approaching because I don't have this uh, infinitely branching wave function. So. Sarah, from, from your perspective, um, looking at both the measurement problem in quantum mechanics and the measure problem uh, in a, a potentially infinite universe in, in cosmology, uh, how, how do you... Uh, how, how do you dig below that to get to some fundamental questions? Um, so I don't I don't take either of the theories seriously when you get to that stage. So I think like there's a tendency to take theories and they have sort of an explanatory domain. And then we always want to push their explanations beyond what they're actually designed to explain and what they actually tell us. And I think that can be useful, but I think in some ways that extrapolation is quite poor. So for example, the idea in the multiverse that there's, you know, uh, a, an infinity of copies of me doing this somewhere is to me a, a sort of a gross overstep of what the theory actually says, because quantum mechanics was designed for a certain type of phenomena at a certain scale of reality. And one of the reasons the measurement problem is difficult because it has to deal with observers and how is it that physical mm -hmm. systems that are information processing systems or acquire information from another physical system, you know, what is the physics of those systems? And I see that as being a completely different domain of physics than what quantum mechanics describes. Um, and that has to do with the physics of evolving systems, systems that generate information and use that information to actually make new possibilities occur. And there's traces of what that looks like in quantum mechanics, but I don't think quantum mechanics describes it. So I think this idea of the multiverse is actually taking uncertainty that we have about microscale phenomena, assuming the entire universe is that when we actually live in a completely different space that's constructed along specific trajectories where information has been building up over 4 billion years on this planet to make specific features that are us that are very local structures um, and probably don't exist anywhere else. Uh, um, I think we need to tease apart uh, the different ways that we're approaching this question. Yeah. We're using the word infinity in many different respects. The infinity yeah. is like said in the, <laughs> in the multi world <laughs> in quantum mechanics is, is, a, is a radically different kind than the infinities in cosmology. I think we, we recognize that. I think there are then questions of uh, in epistemology, both from an experimental and an observational point of view, as George stresses, and from perhaps a, a cognitive capacity, uh, obviously escaping from uh, uh, hyenas and jaguars on the African plain, did not um, by force give us the capacity to understand quantum mechanics. So we our brains evolved for a certain thing. And I think that's that's Sarah's point. So I think I think rather than blur all these different ways of thinking together, we need to tease them apart and address them separately. So Sarah, one more question for you is that um, in in the measure problem in cosmology, because of all these infinities, uh, and you know, and and because of the nature of infinity, if something is even remotely possible, if it's not, let me put it reverse, if it's not impossible in infinity to occur, then that almost impossible thing, but not impossible, will also occur an infinite number of times, maybe with, with, with the same level of infinity. So it becomes very complicated. If there were a, a, an infinite universe, which you don't believe, but let me put the, the, the counterfactual to you, how would how, would there be implications for identifying intelligent aliens, which is your life calling? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So the interesting thing to me is that question doesn't actually make sense in an infinite universe. Um, and what I mean by that is I think um, the fact that we live in a finite universe and there's some locality to where we are is in part how I can explain our existence because the information is built up over time. Whereas I think if you think, um, you know, there's no new physics needed in life and biological things can just fluctuate into existence anywhere. It suggests to me that the information necessary to generate a living thing, a complex thing exists at every point in space time everywhere. And therefore there's nothing special about it. And there's no evolution or knowledge to be gained by the actual physics in the system. And I don't prescribe by a philosophy where everywhere there exists the design of complex things. Um, yeah. David, um, I I want to ask you the, this question because as I've 
uh, been dealing with the multi-world interpretation and thinking it absurd at first, I've experienced the fact that over these couple, three decades, the multi-world uh, interpretation has become more and more accepted by more and more quantum physicists. So why were you right uh, in the in the fabric of, of of reality? You talked about this as one of your four big ideas. Uh, why were you right and I was wrong? Why are there more people now committed to the multi-world interpretation? What's been happening? Uh, well, one thing is that people are trying to build quantum computers. And if you if you want to ask how a quantum algorithm works, then there's really no choice but to work out what it does in each of the separate branches of the Schrodinger equation or what. And and one of the problems with um, well, a major problem with trying to confine theories or ideas to the realm for which they were uh, invented, um, like like the the tigers and whatever it was in our ancestral no lions it would be wouldn't it uh, in our ancestral environment then then the the trouble is you would be forced to say that uh, the theory of quantum computers for which the theory the quantum theory was not invented should be abandoned shouldn't be explored um, and uh, and they won't work. Uh, and even to this day, the universal quantum computer hasn't been built. So no, there, no such computer has ever been experienced by anyone. And the theory was not designed just to describe it. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.